Okay, so um, so yesterday I did a what I called a, a cultural analysis of the Brendan Kavanaugh China incident, and I I called it a cultural analysis. But basically, all I did was I analyzed what the Chinese people were saying and why it didn't have the uh, intended effect. So it wasn't really a cross-cultural analysis because we didn't really talk about what the British side or Brendan side could have done differently to de-escalate the situation. Anyway, uh, I'm not gonna get into that, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a reaction video to see what's probably even more important, that's how Western mainstream media is responding to this situation. So in my feed, I got this Piers Morgan interviews Dr. K and I'm just gonna w watch it and react to it um, without any um, without any prejudgment of what he's gonna say or what he's not gonna say. All right, so let's watch it. Welcome back to Uncensored. Pianist Brendan Kavanagh, AKA Dr. K, was entertaining crowds at St. Pancras Station in London on the public piano there when he was approached by a group of flag-waving Chinese onlookers who demanded he stopped filming in a shocking okay, twist. So demanded that he stop filming uh, that is, that actually uh, is a misrepresentation of what actually happened. Um, they didn't demand that he stop filming. What the Chinese side was actually doing uh, in an awkward way was to request that he remove or hide any of their images when he posts the video, initially not even realizing that it was a live stream. So. Again, that's a little bit of a mischaracterization of what actually happened. They seem to back the tourists. And today the piano has been mysteriously cordoned okay, so, off. So uh, the British police weren't um, siding with the tourists. You have to look at it from the police person's point of view. Uh, they're responding as they should respond taking all of the politics and the geopolitics out of it basically uh now again let's just look at it purely from the uh the policewoman's point of view somebody came to them and made a complaint that somebody was i don't know making racist remarks or doing whatever now whether that is true or not is not the issue the, the issue is what did the policewoman hear from someone uh even like one of the people was a british citizen so what did they what did she hear and when she hears the complaint she wants to go investigate and of course she also wants to try to explain what the complaint was it was done awkwardly i admit it but again it wasn't as peers described it exactly all very mysterious um it was quite bizarre dr k you join me now okay i watched so the whole the video piano being cordoned off um I don't know. It's because so this thing has become kind of like an international incident. So um, it, I think it's actually pragmatic to cordon off the piano to try to prevent any further insta uh, instances or demonstrators. So none of this stuff on its face uh, would be abnormal or an overreaction. But the way that Pierce seems to suggest what's going on. Uh, might indicate that. To get a proper context for this, you're just minding your own business. Sure. You're playing beautiful piano as you do. You're a very talented guy. Thank you, Pete. Uh, people are enjoying it, and, they, yeah. and your stick is they come over and interact right. with you, and it's great. Um, very harmless and fun. Um, and this is you in action. I mean, fantastic. But then this okay, so, so far, in the uh, there's nothing wrong with that introduction that I can see. Yes, uh, Brendan Kavanaugh is minding his own business as far as we can all tell. With their, with their flags. Yes. Come over and sort of believe they have the right <laughs> to stop you filming yes. and doing what you're yeah, doing. Absolutely. Let's have a listen to what happened. Okay. 
This is our right we're protecting and that's it. But what right? I don't understand. Image right. We are protecting our own image right. You're not sharing. But this we're in public. Yeah, exactly. But no. we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're you not are in, in a communist free country. China now, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is reasons now. We have no, we're not in communist China. We're in no, a free no, country. No, 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 no. We've got the Chinese flag there. It doesn't matter. Show me the Chinese flag. Why are you touching her? <laughs> Stop touching her! Don't touch her, please. Touch do not touch her. Please, you are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Don't touch right, her. So, <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. Um, so when I did my cultural analysis, obviously it was for more for Chinese people to see how that type of overreaction, um, you know, cause it's, it's both sides responsibility to actually have a constructive dialogue. Um, Chinese, uh, of that type of kind of CCP mindset, uh, they just have a different view of what constructive dialogue is, which means it's probably based on a system of reciprocity, which means you have to first, um, even if their assertions are ridiculous, you have to kind of try to find where they might have some merit in what they say and start from there it's kind of like the system of reciprocity you allow them to say something ridiculous and you give them a little bit of credit to where they might have some merit and then that can actually lead to a completely different set of discussions it's totally bizarre he got very angry that guy but i also yeah, thought the policewoman who came over to you yeah i didn't like what she was doing either which is almost no. acquiescing to this well absolutely she completely took the side of the chinese because they mentioned the r word um racism. so yeah like uh, i said she didn't quote unquote take the side of the chinese i don't think uh from her point of view she received a one-sided complaint and she was responding uh, if we assume that she is completely unbiased, then she has to assume that the person who made the complaint was being truthful, even when they uh, were exaggerating or even completely misrepresenting the situation. From the policewoman's point of view, she has no idea because she's not trained in that level of cultural cross-cultural communications she melted like a jelly and, and nothing you said was racist at all well I, th I think she said her her beef with me was that i said we i said we're not in china now yeah and she found that an extremely offensive phrase because she said that would hurt the feelings of the chinese around the piano mm. and you can hear her whispering you can't say that and i said what and she said you can't say we're not in china now i said that's a factual yeah, statement so and i so factual statements. So it, again, it's the difference between Chinese culture and Western culture or Chinese reasoning and Western reasoning. Um, it, a factual statement is irrelevant because uh, Westerners tend to think in absolute truths. It's a factual statement. Whereas the way that the Chinese mind works is everything is relative. So um, making a factual statement in the context of a disagreement where the insinuation is because you're from quote unquote china or communist china you must have a you must be wrong or you must not understand the quote unquote western values it's all relative so again there's no right or wrong here i'm not blaming brendan for the way that he reacted actually i think uh, brendan reacted pretty responsibly he um tried his best to understand unfortunately the chinese side really did give him a chance to 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 kind of reach a better level of communication and of course that's why i did the cross-cultural analysis in the other video really just analyzing the chinese side for any chinese listeners who speak english who want to communicate better with their western counterparts and I think when the police deal with these politically correct issues, they're all over the place because they think they're going to offend someone. Mm. And so she took it out on me. She thought she was, I suppose, virtue signaling, signaling to her masters. And uh, but she did. The irony is they yeah. were filming themselves, <laughs> some kind of commercial. Sure, and they were also filming me. It's been pointed out if you actually right. watch the video. There's a guy in a gimbal from from the CCP. Uh, 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 group that was there who was yeah so this is where 
everything is kind of lost in translation. Uh, the fact that they were filming them and the fact that other people were filming in a public space really is it's kind of irrelevant to the core issue. And the core issue is um, there's an there's another analysis where the core issue is could be that the Chinese people didn't want their images to be um, to be broadcast on a, another channel before they had a chance to do it because of the quote unquote their non-disclosure or whatever they claim they have. But the other thing is, it's just because uh, there's another analysis that they just wanted to use the piano and they were waiting for a long time. And Chinese people never mean what they say or say what they mean, but that's just the way they communicate. And if you don't understand how Chinese people think and how they communicate, you would assume that's being disingenuous or flat out just being dishonest or lying, which is actually not the case in the Chinese cultural context is because it's just how they communicate. They insinuate more than directly accuse. And when they want something, they're going to find another reason besides the reason that they actually want. And that's cultural. One of the girls was filming me, but they said I wasn't allowed to film them and that I needed to delete my footage because they had uh, a disclaimer that no one was allowed to film them in the station. Okay, quite bizarre. What's, it's really hit a nerve. Over six million people have yeah. now watched this online. Yeah. You've probably never had a reaction quite like this, have you? Well, no. And also, I've got to tell you, I've, just before I came in, Piers, I've just had a phone call. The video is on the verge of being taken down by YouTube because I've had a second strike against it. So someone does not want this video to be taken uh, doesn't want this video yeah, so, to be there. Um, it's um, yeah, so anything that happens after the fact, which is after the quote-unquote incident happens, uh, those are all normal reactions uh, on both sides. So you'll see a lot of uh, anti-Chinese uh, vloggers and content creators making content, uh, criticizing the Chinese people and criticizing the CCP. And then, of course, you'll see a lot of... Um, Chinese content creators and vloggers doing the exact opposite. And that's normal. So we shouldn't read too much into that. Uh, I just wanted to see how mainstream Western media was kind of portraying this situation. It's about to be taken down. So if anyone's watching this, please download it. And if the video disappears, um, obviously pressure has been put on YouTube. To what does it tell you about where we are with free speech in the world? Right? Uh, well, this whole thing was a mini parable about the value of free speech. It was a spontaneous live stream. Um, we were attempted to be shut down, um, but in the end, free speech prevailed. And I think that's why. Yeah, so it's I don't. Such a I don't think this is fundamentally a free speech issue. This is fundamentally a cross-cultural communications issue. Um, free speech was just the kind of the the mechanism or the platform in which uh, the two sides could actually have a disagreement. Um, because fundamentally, uh, we're all just people. So we don't fundamentally disagree, but we need a reason to argue and to disagree when we are unable to communicate with each other. In this situation, uh, free speech happened to be the platform in which the two sides, the Chinese side and the Western side, can find a way to disagree, but fundamentally, it's just a cross-cultural communication issue. Action yeah. around the world, because where do you see free speech prevailing in, in a little mini drama? Mm. Um, and that's what happened. They walked away, free speech prevailed, but now they want to take the video down. The video is on the verge of being taken down. Please, if you're watching this, download so, yes. the video. So from and the, the Western video... side, it obviously is a free speech issue, but if you just watch some of the Chinese reaction videos and the Chinese explainer videos and even the some of the pro-China videos, um, this has nothing to do with free speech. So again, free speech has become kind of the topic in which Westerners are going to take a stand on this issue. Uh, but for me, fundamentally, it's a cross-cultural communications issue, which both sides do have responsibility. Video gets taken down. Let's kick up a stink. <laughs> How did the police end up with you over the whole thing? They called. The, they, there was about five of them, and one of the one of the group went and got the police and said that we've got here a violent thug who is threatening us and is calling us communists, 
and uh, we feel threatened and he also needs to delete his footage and uh, the police lady immediately took their side and uh, she yeah, gave so, me quite a hard time. Uh, that probably is true. Uh, everything that uh, uh, Brendan said that the Chinese people said to the police is probably true, which is that why at the beginning of the video, I said, you have to look at it from the police point of view. The police are trained not to be uh, racially biased or culturally biased. So when someone comes up with a complaint, even if it's a false allegation, they have to assume that the allegation is true and take that presumption into confronting the person who has alleged, been alleged to have committed some kind of, I don't know, violation or whatever it is. So, yeah, so I don't blame the police in this situation. It's just kind of all in the wrong. The conversation is wrong, which means, well, the conversation is not constructive. The conversation is just the Western side making the Westerners feel good about their anti-Chinese sentiments. And then when the Chinese side has a similar type of reaction, it's just the Chinese people reinforcing their worldview and their beliefs. Fundamentally, it is a cross-cultural communications issue. She told me I couldn't say things. She said to stop mm -hmm. filming. No, I watched it. I, was, I couldn't understand what she was doing. <laughs> oh, she... <laughs> Well, I knew what she was doing. But I, I couldn't, couldn't understand, understand why. it either, Piers. You know, yeah. I th what I reaction have you? I mean, have you been back since to play the piano? Uh, no, my my friend Terry. I've got a good friend. My friend Terry Miles. Uh, God bless him. He was there today. He's a he's a fantastic. Mm. Uh, All YouTuber. right. So I don't want this. Uh, and there was e even. I don't want this video to get uh, too long. It's just basically I wanted to kind of see how Western media uh, reacts to these types of incidences and how. A lot of it is taken out of context, especially if you um, if you look at the intro, which is the hook of trying to get people to really, um, it's almost like you want to prime the audience for what they're going to hear afterwards. So you sensationalize what happened by kind of either exaggerating, but definitely taking it out of context. And then you can see through this conversation, um, it's the wrong conversation. Well. It's the right conversation if you just want to uh, have viewers and, and stimulate a conversation or stimulate a debate or whatever. But it's the wrong conversation if the goal is actually to improve our mutual cross-cultural communications. All right, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, the other um, cultural analysis video um, is in the link below, so you can watch both and tell me what you think. Thanks.